But he's not in support of restructuring. He made that clear because he said that there are so many people who are having different ideas, which is contrary to what you've just told us, which is that the basic ingredients of what is under restructuring are quite clear. And they were enunciated. And, and the thing that we used to have. So, uh, it, yes, there's some confusion. No, there's no confusion. You see, that we are allies does not mean we agree on everything. We will deal, you and I will deal with those things we agree on. The ones we don't agree on, we put it aside. Because the, Until another day, when you change your mind, then we can do, deal with those as well. The media is reporting that your party, uh, the ADP, which his coalition has adopted as a party, and some 30 plus other parties are looking at this mega alliance uh, ahead of the elections. What we, the SDP is looking at now is consolidation. People are coming to the SDP, thank God, on a daily basis. Our primary concern right now is how to accommodate them and consolidate them and be the structure of the party. That's what we are doing now. There will be a day, there will always be time for alliance and discussion, but the timing is important. The new revival in the SDP is recent, and therefore we must consolidate it before you start venturing into all kinds of alliance uh, discussions. Of course, we are friendly with all parties. Uh, most parties feel comfortable with us. It's, for years and years, we've been hosting many parties in Abuja, even when it's not election time. So we welcome the idea of an alliance. But what I'm saying is that our priority now is building our party and consolidating the party. So um, not any it's a formal, bit premature to be talking about alliances. Formal alliances, yes. That's my view. But there are those who say that, you, that no one party, as things currently stand, I, no one party can dislodge the ruling party. Just I, like I no have been one of the most articulate advocates of that, that in Africa, it's almost impossible to dislodge a sitting president. It's possible but difficult. Therefore, if you want to make a change, many parties must put their support behind one candidate at the right time. At the right time, the being, right time. being the key. Now, um, there are many threats, it does appear, to this uh, democratic uh, journey that Nigeria started again in 1999. Yeah. It's uh, next year, by the time the elections take place, and thereafter it will be 20 years. It's the longest unbroken run of democracy that we've had. But again, it appears like some clouds are gathering again. Uh, I remember that uh, General Danjuma, they talk about people defending themselves since it seems as if government is not defending them and there seems to be complicity uh, within the armed forces. Yes. This, of course, has been denied. But then there are other things happening uh, which also tend to give a sense of some kind of deja vu, uh, we, you know, we've been here before uh, kind of thing. Now, do you agree that the democracy is under threat? I mean, you've, you've witnessed, as you pointed out earlier, you've witnessed several of this. You've yes. witnessed right from the very beginning. Yes. Uh, do you see those signs? Well, any, any uh, crisis in the polity, and particularly any confrontation between the legislature and the executive is always a source of potential danger. Because it's a threat to, to stability. For example, where um, people went to the National Assembly and took the mace, despite all the security arrangements, and they made their way with the mace. And if, so recently, I think it was in Port Harcourt, some hooligans stormed a, a, a sitting court and drove out the judge and the lawyers. And I don't think that has ever happened in this country. People have always respected the judiciary. Now, thugs moved into it and drove out the judge. These are all threats. But people will point out that the government started it, the, the case of the judiciary. Yes. If you recall, the DSS stunned the residences yes. of those judges yes. and arrested uh, them. Regardless of the what started this threat to democracy, it is still a threat to democracy. But all you are saying is that government started it. They are showing a very bad example. When there are laid down procedure for dealing with corrupt or delinquent judges, 
push all that aside and then storm them. And, but what I'm saying is that whether it was government or hooligans, disruption of the judicial system is one of the threats to democracy. It will be deprecated, regardless of who did it. And um, that, of course, because, I mean, if there's battle between the legislature and, and the executive, executive, and then there's battle between the, the executive and the judiciary. judiciary, and there's battle between the legislature and the, the judiciary. The name for that situation is called anarchy. Because it seems as if that's where we're going. I mean, the National Assembly is up in arms against the judiciary for saying it has no right to sequence the elections. The but, 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 but they are saying that the Electoral Act has set out the sequence. Question, who made the Electoral Act? It didn't, come, it didn't draw from heaven. It was made by the legislature. The same legislature has the competence to amend the law, which it made. I'm not a lawyer, but it appears reasonable for me. Yes, that if I made something, I, and I have the power to, to modify it. So if a judiciary says, that I have no such power, it's very difficult to understand. One of the victims of this, and I ask you because I know you're very, as you mentioned earlier in the interview, you were secretary to the government of the federation. Yes. You were uh, minister of finance. You've worked uh, at, in the banking sector, rising to the top. You were permanent secretary. Uh, in the last two years or so, budgets get submitted towards the tail end of the year. And for the next six months, there are arguments back and forth. How, with that, how then do we expect the economy to thrive and grow when the spending that you have started in January may not now start until August or September? It is irresponsible. At the National Conference, one of the decisions we took was that a responsible government should submit its budget proposals by October, or end of September. And the National Assembly should work on the budget for the next two, three months and get the budget ready for signature by the 1st of January. So by that law. by law, and the law will be passed to make it mandatory, <clears throat> so that the economy can have the full effect, the full benefit of the fiscal disbursement. But after all, in Nigeria, government finance is a key component of our total economic flows. Where those flows are delayed or distorted, you delay the changes and growth in the economy that depend on those flows. In other words, we are delaying economic development, we are delaying the generation of employment, production of food, et cetera, et cetera. It, it appears as if we don't appreciate the consequences of such delays. So in that conference, we, we said that should be a, law, a law should be passed, that to make it mandatory. Those timelines for budget preparation should be made mandatory by law. Uh, you're going to, uh, your, your party has selected a candidate in Ekiti for the coming election. Yes. Um, unlike other parties, yes. every member of the party within Ekiti yes. was allowed to vote in the primary. Yes, indeed. Uh, other parties, of course, would usually nominate delegates and then it's yes. those delegates yes. who vote. Uh, wh why that difference? Well, we believe in the SDP that we're a different type of party. We are a social democratic party, a philosophy of social democracy, which has the welfare of the individual as its major concern. The welfare of the person from cradle to grave will be the primary concern of the social democratic party in government. And we have seen how the convention mode of selecting candidates have been abused that uh, no longer, we no longer play politics, we now play monetics. People will gather half of the delegates, and lock them up in a hotel room, give them food as if they were prisoners, then we take them in trucks the day of the convention to the venue, release them like prisoners, load them with money, to go and vote. Now to me that is bastardization of the political process, of the democratic process. We feel that we should, we need to set a new template of democracy for Nigeria. That was why we decided in our party that every party member should be allowed to participate directly in nominating our candidate. Will that apply at the presidential level when eventually you get to that? Well, 
uh, I don't know whether we'll be able to afford it. You see, because we'll be running like INEC. We are going to need billions of Naira. We don't have billions of Naira. And also, the fallout will bounce on the party. In other words, you can't run, even the Ekiti one, where people voted in 177 word points. Within right? the state. Within the state. There were allegations of fraud, there were allegations of people running away with, you know, and the party that conducted the election, of course, gets blamed uh, for the imperfections in the process. So it is a calculated risk that we are taking, <laughs> organizing about, about 52,000 members voted. It's never happened before. Uh, somebody said, those who have done what nobody has done before, we see what nobody <laughs> has seen <laughs> before. <laughs> that's the, that's, that's, yeah. where, that's where I want to point. demonstrate that we are uh, the, you know, democratic people, we believe in fairness and justice, let everybody vote. And everybody voted. There were allegations, there were, but we set up a panel to listen to the complaints. Of course, nobody, everybody was not satisfied. They still blamed the party leadership for, uh, you know, siding with one candidate or the other. So there's nothing you do really that is uh, perfect. But we feel that what we did is an improvement on the convention model for choosing candidates. Of course, we will do what makes sense. If we come to the presidential and we need uh, 20 billion naira, which we haven't got, we will do whatever. Because our constitution allows either that the direct method or the indirect, or the indirect method. method. Chief Alai, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for Thank you.